Good to go. Welcome, guys. I'll just wait for a few more people to tune in. We'll do the preview. Preview is going to be live again two weeks in a row. So um, hopefully you're, you're all having a good week, ready to go for Sunday. I know I am very, very excited for Sunday and more so based on the end. So that's kind of why I wanted to go live and talk about it because it's very exciting. I think it's going to get everyone up and about for Sunday. If you're not already up and about, which you should be, it's, um, yeah, this team, if we field the team that we'll, we'll go through now, that's a pretty strong team uh, that can do some damage if it switches on and, and plays proper Saints footy. So, um, yeah, comment your thoughts. Let me know, firstly, how you're feeling about the game. Are you confident? Are you nervous? Um, just no emotions, just blank, you know. <laughs> Uh, we'll, we'll get into it very shortly, Sainers. But yeah, first of all, thank you for um, the awesome support last week at the game, the cheer squad. That was amazing. Um, and all through the week as well with all the different bits of content and watching it. Cardi's watching. He's pumped for the game, mate. It's going to be huge. It's going to be huge. Um, you guys can hear me because someone's just asked, is audio working? Uh, I assume you can all hear me. Um, so just give me a thumbs up if you can. I reckon Chris has just not got his headphones in. Um, and then we'll, yep, get get straight into it. I'll just get the teams up and we'll get stuck into it. Cool. Thumbs up. Beautiful. All right. Let's get into it. Let's share the teams. Chris, sorry about your audio, mate. Um, yeah, just try and tweak it if you can. Oh, Blipper, you're going to get done by 15 goals. 15 goals, you reckon, mate? I reckon you're in dreamland, to be honest. Uh, you should update that display picture. It's it's the default. That's not good enough. All right, beautiful. Let's do this. So the this is the article that's just dropped. So obviously, beautiful photo there. Nice little smile. Makes you very excited, doesn't it? Let's get into it. St. Kilda's lineup for Sunday's clash against Carlton could be bolstered by multiple experienced stars with four players added to the 26-man squad. Brad Hill will return after missing last week with bruised lungs. That doesn't sound very good. While big men Max King, Tim Membry, and Jack Hayes, the trifecta, Sainers, have all been listed on the extended bench. After making positive progress on Wednesday, King will have some final boxes to tick during Friday's main session, uh, which is an open training session, by the way, so I'll be there. So get down if you can. Um, and that'll hopefully see him through. Member and Hayes both played VFL last week and are in the mix. Obviously, we know Zach Jones is going to be out for the rest of the season with a knee, which is which is really bad. Um, fingers crossed he's all right in the offseason and gets back to his best next year. Um, but obviously, yeah, extended bench, so the final team won't be confirmed until 5 p.m. Um, tomorrow. So as it stands, in Brad Hill, King, Hayes, Membry out. Zach Jones, no omissions yet, just Jonesy with his injury. Gresham was the sub last week. Um, you'd imagine he would be elevated and he would start. He was pretty good when he came on, so I don't think Gresh is going to stay as the sub. I think more likely it could be a Marcus Winhager. Um, it could even be a Jack Billings, to be honest. I mean, he's a bit of an X-factor off the off the sub. Cooper Sharman named on. Oh, that's a, Actually, that was... That's a surprise. That's a surprise. I actually thought Cooper Sharman was going to be touch and go with his hammy. So the fact that he's named on field means that he's definitely playing, I think. is that? I think that's the rule where if they're named on field. Um, but either way, that's fantastic because Cooper Sharman was very influential in his, um, in his game last week on James Sicily and with Carlton and obviously their back line. Um, you know they they've got some good tools there. They're pretty pretty sturdy down back, but obviously on the flip side, you know Charlie Kerno is going to be the one that that really tests us. But overall, not a bad looking team. Cal uh, Cal Wilkie's going to have his work cut out. Uh, we know that with Charlie Kerno, but you just wonder like Josh Battle is going to have to come in and support him as much as possible. No Harry Mackay for Carlton. Um, I'm not sure what the Carlton changes are. I'll just double check who they've brought in. 
Carlton have got Ed Kerno, Bins, Honey, Durden, Zach Fisher out. Adam Chera and Mitch McGovern. Um, so their outs are pretty massive. Um, so that's looking, that bows pretty well for us, I think. And the odds are starting to turn. I think that um, that's always a good sign. Not that it really justifies anything, but yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. I don't know, Sainas. It's it's the perfect time to get a team like this on the park, isn't it? Like the timing's perfect. If you had have had this team in round one and not in round 21, you're kind of upset. We didn't have this team in round one by any means, but we're getting it at the pointy end of the season where we want to be playing our best football and we want to be beating the teams like Carlton, Richmond, and Geelong in particular that are around us on the ladder. Because if we secure two of the next three, I would I would say, I'm not going to dare say it, I would say that that's finals. Two of the next three and we play finals. If we win this, I really think we're there. I think the momentum will be strong enough that we'll get one more win in the last three and that'll be enough. And it'd be nice to go to round 24 against Brisbane and, um, and have a free hit. Like how good would that be? Go to Brizzy, round 24, we've locked in top eight. We go there, we play gung-ho football, we go there for the win, and if we don't win, it's fine, but you're testing yourself against a top four team away from home, and then you get the week off and you play first week of the finals elimination final. That bodes very nicely, but obviously I know we're not there, we're not going to jump the gun. Carlton are in very good form. They've won six in a row, I think, um, and their last two have been against Port Adelaide and Collingwood, you know, the two top teams. So their form is probably the most hot in the competition and they've got the hottest player in the competition on form and that's Charlie Kerner and he's kicked 16 goals in two weeks. That is scary, you know, and that's against Port Adelaide. Uh, sorry, uh, West Coast and and um, Collingwood. Port Adelaide was before that, but um, their form's been great. You can't, you know, you can't really dance around it they've been good they've done what they needed to do they've beaten te teams below them and they've certainly beaten teams above them so it's going to be a very very interesting game let's go through some of these comments and see what you guys are feeling appreciate you all tuning in last minute i know i didn't really give you much of a heads up but very very happy that over 130 of you are tuning in um as well yeah this is a great one nick how the f is king back in the team i know like what was it four weeks ago three three weeks ago we we're all you know, crying in, in our sleep. I mean, I certainly was, but crying in our sleep thinking, damn, like King is out for the season and now he's risen. The King has risen from the dead, you know? So he knows that it's crunch time and his shoulder can't get any worse. I think that's the key thing that really gave us the best chance of getting him back is that his injury is as bad as it's going to get. I mean, I think he's had surgery, but it can't get any worse. So you're going to play him if, if he's, you know, 90% fit, you're going to play Max King in, in the run home because as you know, as good as it was seeing us kick 19 goals eight last week, um, having him there is just a different ball game. And, you know, when you're playing teams with very, very solid defenses like Carlton, um, and then you've got Richmond and Geelong, they've all got very good defenders in their own right. And then obviously Brisbane with Harris Andrews and Payne, you need some targets. Uh, we can't always be relying on the likes of Caminiti and Owens, as much as they've been amazing this season and carried their weight and more, you know, you want players, experienced players like Max King and Tim Membry and even Jack Hayes coming in. And I think the benefit of having Jack Hayes too, and I think someone alluded to it here, this one here, Declan says, Hayes is huge for the ruck rotation, also gives Marshall breathing space. That's exactly what I was going to say, Declan. You took it out of my mouth, mate. Um, we, we saw how good Roe was late against North, um, and he needs a chop out. He's a bit sore. Roe's been dominating all season. He's you know very stiff not to be in the All-Australian calculations in my eyes, but there's obviously a lot of other good Ruckmans in the competition, so that's why it's like that. Not discounting his form at all. He's been probably, in my eyes, you know top five Rucks in the comp at the moment, um, but he could also well be a very, very handy forward. And we haven't really seen that apart from the North game in the last quarter when we needed to kick goals and we were struggling. And then you put Owens in the middle, changes the game there, and then you put Roe deep and he's just got natural forward craft that's so handy um, in, in moments where you really need to just maximize every entry you get. And we don't struggle getting entries. We just struggle maximizing entries. And last week we maximized. The week before, we didn't for the most part until Roe went there. So having Hayes back 
means that he can chop out. Owens can then chop out or play Ruck Ro Rover even, put him on the ball. It'd be amazing to see that with Hayes in the Ruck or Rowe in the Ruck. And then Hayes or Rowe rotates forward Ruck. I think that's an awesome combination. You leave King deep. It's his first game back. He doesn't need to be running around. Put him in the square. Occup occupy Jacob Wietering. Keep him firmly focused on King. And then you've got Shaman, Membry, Owens, Filippo, Caminiti. That's a stacked forward line. Like, that's a lot of tools. Rowan Marshall, you've got... Then you've got Caminiti, Shaman, uh, Hayes, Membry, King, Filippo, and Owens. That's all... Every player there is over six foot two. Like, that's unreal. That's about six players over six foot two now. Like, it's funny, five, six weeks ago, we're thinking, bloody hell, we're short. We don't have many talls. And now we've got tall stocks to the wazoo. It's crazy, you know, how quickly things change. G'day, Brandon. Thanks for watching, mate. Saints by 15. Robbie's jumping the gun on the tip, but I'll take that. Um, in, Hill, out, Jones. Yep. Uh, so who do Membry and King replace? Yeah, so it's good to talk about the ends, obviously, but obviously uh, the full team's not listed. So I'll throw it to you guys. If we've got Hill, King, Hayes, and Membry in, we need, a what, three more players or two more players out and then obviously a sub. So who do you guys think is most likely to be dropped? Is it, like, I loved Windy off halfback, but if Brad Hill's back, do you then just put Sinclair where Windy was and then Windy misses or Windy becomes the sub? I, I think he'd be stiff to be dropped, but does Windy become the sub? Um, and then maybe players like, I mean, Jack Billings, I think should stay in. Caminiti, we, we, I was going to say could be prone to being omitted and just rested or played at Sandy or just even rested, to be honest, because even Ross said a couple of weeks ago, he was going to do that if players were available, but they weren't, but we challenged his one week and, um, he got off. So you don't challenge that one week and then drop him. So that means that he's probably playing. Cooper Sharman was great, unless he's under an injury cloud, but he's listed on field, so he plays. Jade Gresham is still listed on the interchange as the last player on the bench. So I'm still wondering if, you know, Ross is sticking to playing him as a sub again, back to back. Because he came on early last week, got a full game because of Zach Jones's injury. So he basically you know, we omitted him to being the sub to really teach him a lesson, but then he's on in the first 10 minutes, you know? So he really just played the full game. So that omission didn't really count. So I wonder if Ross is going to say, okay, Gresh, you're the sub again. Um, we'll bring you on when you're ready or, you know, start him and Jack Hayes or someone like that as the sub. But Jack Hayes may not get up, you know? Um, I think he had a bit of a tight hammy a couple of weeks ago. So I'd be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised if he missed and we just brought in Hill King Membry out Jones, maybe a Windhager and, you know, Windhager goes to the sub Billings and then, you know, Hayes or I don't know, someone else becomes sub, but yeah, I don't know. It's going to be an interesting one. Um, Blue Broad just throwing in some, some money there. It's just charity for, for Terry. Um, but thank you very much, mate. Appreciate it. I think he's just giving me that in case um, the Blues spank us by 10 goals and I feel a bit better about myself. I'll go there and uh, I could I could buy the, the 2004 um, 10 wins in a row DVD for that price, to be honest. But appreciate it, mate. Thank you for tuning in. Um, any ladder predictors from Brandon? Ladder predictors? I've deliberately kind of stayed away from that just because... I don't know. There's just so many. It's just such a tight margin for, you know, the teams like Saints, Carlton, Essendon. Essendon are maybe out of it, but I think they've still got a chance. You've got Adelaide. You've got GWS. You've got the Bulldogs. You've got Richmond. I mean, Friday Night Football, Richmond Dogs. That's huge in the makeup of who makes finals. If Richmond get up, then the game against us in a week's time, whether we win or lose, is huge. And then Geelong, they've got Port Adelaide at home. If they drop that, I reckon they're done, and then we play them in three weeks' time. So that affects that game completely as well. So uh, to answer your question, no, I've not done ladder predictors just because it's for my own mental well-being. If I do it, I'll get obsessed with it. I've actually not watched many games. Like I didn't even watch Carlton Collingwood really last week because I knew if Carlton won, it really affected us, and I didn't want to get sucked into that narrative. I'm using words like Ross Lyon now, but I don't. I don't want to focus on other teams. If we win... We get the job done. It doesn't matter what everyone else is doing. Our position stays safe. So that's kind of my um, 
my approach. If we lose and it gets to like round 24 and other results dictate whether we make it or not, maybe then I'll jump the gun. But at the moment, nah, I'm, I'm all right. I think I'll just stay, stay, stay clear of that and just focus on Sunday. Um, Gresham out, Windy the sub. So that's Judy. Uh, Hunter Clark gets dropped. Is that so? He's on the bench. He's listed on the bench as well. That's from Lee. Windy Def sub, in my opinion. It's from Chris. Uh, yeah, Filippo as well, but he's listed on half forward. So I don't know if that changes things. Windy Billings, Filippo needs a rest, in my opinion, but played very well last week. Um, Ross should go for one of Stocker or Windy. No Dougal Howard, obviously, so he's still out. Ah, there we go. Go Blues. He just needed to get the Go Blues in there. I just saw that. Appreciate the donation, mate. Thank you very much for that. But yeah, there's a plug for you as well. Blue Abroad. I mean, I hate doing it, but I love Terry and I love what he does on Blue Abroad. And we did a video, I think it would have been on Tuesday. We went to Marvel Stadium, did a video in there in Marvel Stadium, which was pretty surreal considering where both that channel started five years ago. And it's all because of people like, everyone watching. Um, so I really appreciate that. But if you haven't watched it, check it out. It's a lot of fun. He's also got one on his channel um, from more of a, a Carlton perspective, obviously. So check it out when you can, Sanders, after this. Um, yeah, Aaron, will this be will this be the week that Cooper Sharman actually holds on to the hangar, probably takes away the Toyota if he, if he gets that? He's had, I reckon in every game he's played, he's had at least two attempts on taking a hangar. And it hasn't come off, has it? But... I really want him to get into it. Yeah, talking about Carlton, obviously no Chera, Walsh, Kennedy, Mackay, McGovern, uh, Jason as well. Damn, I, I thought he was playing Boyd. Yep, okay. So they do have, you know, missing links. But like us at the start of the season, it didn't matter if you've got the right approach, if you're, you're mentally on and you play team first football, it literally doesn't matter who's on the park. You could play, you could take 10 starting players out. Ross has done it before. If you've got the right mentality, the right structure, and you plan and you execute, you, you're going to win, or you're going to give yourself the best chance. Um, yeah, mate. Round what was that round ten? I can remember this vividly. Round ten, two thousand and four. It was thirty-one ten, one ninety-six to eighty-eight. So it was a hundred and eight point win. But people forget. I mean, he kicked five on Fev in the first quarter, but it's the second quarter we kicked. 12 goals, one, 12 goals, one in the second quarter. Imagine kicking 73 points in a quarter. Like that's ridiculous. I thought we were going to easily. The only thing I had about that game is we landed on 196 and we didn't get to the one, not to the 200 when that game had 200 written all over it. Um, yeah. Cardi getting involved. Yeah. That was the best one actually. And the week before we won by a hundred as well. It was 200 point games. Um, in a row, we beat West Coast by, I think, 101 points the week before. Correct me if I'm wrong. Brent Guerra kicked seven. And then the next week, Gary kicks nine or something, five in the first quarter. And we win by over 100 points again. So that game broke all sorts of records. It was unreal. I think Milne kicked six as well on top of Gary's nine. It was nuts. Back when we just kicked goals for fun. Um, honestly, this conversation shows we're deep and it's a good problem to have. Absolutely. We've got depth now and we don't have many players left on the injury list, to be honest. I think, um, who have we got left on the injury list? Let's just double check. It's been updated, I think. So yeah, Billings, he, oh, so it hasn't been updated, but Billings, Higgins played, Cordy played, Dan McKenzie, TBC, King, Membry are back. So the only person that could play this year that's on the injury list is Seb Ross at four to five weeks. That's the injury list, Seb Ross. That's pretty damn good. What a time to have a clean bill of health. Other teams might pick up some injuries now, but we're coming in hot um, with a fit list, and um, hopefully that means battle for spots. That means high intensity and playing you know, the best Saints footy we can at the pointy end of the season. So, um, yeah, I don't... I mean, that could be interesting, whether we want to use him. Even if Weeden goes to a king or a memory, does Sharman just play off whoever he's on um, and create a mismatch and just piss them off? Because that that's something you've seen him do before, where uh, even against Geelong, he played on uh, on their defender. I can't remember what his name is. Um, Stewart. Uh, Tom Stewart. And really caused him problems, took him out of the game, and we won that game. And that actually opened up opportunities for King and Membry in that game, and we won. 
So if Shaman does get under the skin of someone like a Weedering, I think that could be a massive factor in this game. Um, but regardless of matchups, we've got to bring our best. If we don't bring our best, we're not gonna we're not gonna win this game. I think that Carlton are in very good form, the best form of any team in the comp. I'd argue. Um, I think that's pretty straightforward. They're on the longest winning streak. They're oh no, actually they're not. GWS is. It's weird. GWS are flying, but Carlton obviously next best. Um, I think if we play like we did for the most of last week and Carlton play like they've been playing, it's going to be a red hot game. It's going to be an elimination finals game. It's going to be a sellout, 50,000. It's our home game. So to wrap it up, to wrap the preview up, get there, Sainers. If you can't get there and you've already got a ticket or reserve seat, send me a text, send me an email or a DM and let's reallocate that. If you can't make it, we want to get Sainers in their seats. It's going to be a sellout. We know Carlton fans are going to rock up. They rock up to every game. As much as we hate them, we can say that they always rock up and fill the stadiums. So we need to make some noise. We did last week. We need to make even more noise this week. It's retro round. We are going to be rocking the 150th collared Guernseys. So that's awesome. Um, and I think Mosh are the main sponsor of that. So we're going to be outside the ground, possibly with some past players as well, doing some, um, I guess, Fox Pops and chatting to people. And if you're in the area, come and say hi, pick up a show bag, a Mosh show bag. Uh, that'll be fun as well. Um, but yeah, all I can say is get to the game, saying is this is huge. We win this. I really do think we play finals because the momentum is going to be firmly in our favor. And um, we've got a clean bill of health, and that's great to see as well. So... I'll wrap it up there. Hopefully uh, we're back Sunday night and I've got a huge stupid smile on my face. Actually, lastly, we didn't talk about Cripper. He's been in unreal form. Do we tag him? Do we tag Patrick Cripps or do we go head to head? Do we put Jack Steele on him? Do we keep Windy and the team to tag him? That's one last question um, that I might quickly flag with you guys to get some more comments. Um, and lastly, with this one, uh, interviews in the rooms. I don't think it's happening this week. It's just because uh, it's just to do with uh, Channel 7 having access to the rooms because I think it's a Channel 7 game. So uh, we'll try and work in either the Richmond or Geelong game if we win and we'll get down into the rooms. Uh, but for this week, probably not, sadly. But good to see that you guys are enjoying all that coverage as well. Um, really enjoying getting into the rooms and, and um, getting a p different perspective on, on you know, the game and hearing from the players, you know, pretty raw sort of thoughts on the game uh, is always awesome. So a lot of people think Jack Steele to Crips. Um, impossible is nothing. Absolutely, mate. We'll leave it on that. Impossible is nothing. And you've seen Ross this week say that, you know, don't believe the narrative. Don't believe the shit that people are saying. Um, we're fifth for a reason. You know, we're, we haven't been in the best form in the last 10 weeks, but you'd say in the last probably six to seven quarters that we've played. You'd say four or five of them are closer to Saints footy. And that's that's very, very important. So we need to bring a high intensity, high octane game, play as close to the four quarters as we can and give ourselves the best chance against a team that's full of confidence. Um, that's the thing. We need to slow them down, take the energy out of the game early and play it on our terms. If we do that, I'm pretty confident we can we can cause an upset. It feels like every time we play Carlton, we have to cause an upset. We're always the underdogs. They're always favoured. Last time we played them, we were four and one. I think we were still underdogs in that game. So, yeah, let's get the job done, Sainers. Get to the game. Make some noise. Let's get the job done for the boys. And, um, and then hopefully they'll get the job done for us on the field. So I'll wrap it up there. If you're watching this and you haven't subscribed, again, I'm yet to pick the Rewalt winner. I'm just giving people another couple of weeks just to subscribe join you might win a signed nick crew or portrait i'll deliver it you know in person if you're in melbourne i'll come to your house i'll give you the frame for free and um, that's just because i appreciate your support so like us on instagram as well at saints tv pod we've got lots of different content on there um, and obviously on youtube as well so thanks again for watching saners if you tuned in late this will save on youtube you can tune in afterwards and watch the full preview we talk about the teams we do all that stuff um and yeah get to open training session tomorrow i'll be there marshall will be there i think we'll be chatting to a few boys as well um so yeah should be a good next couple of days leading up to a big game but thanks again saners enjoy the rest of your thursday night and i'll see you after the game on sunday for hopefully a win take care and as always go you mighty saners See you guys.